<laughs> What's up, everybody? We're back. Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast number seven. All right. What's going on, everybody? How we doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Super excited. We have, uh, we're in our new studio. So welcome, everybody. Uh, we have our special guest. We'll get into him in a little bit. But uh, Justin from Fight Back CBD. Justin, say hello. <laughs> What's up? Can you see me? Yeah, we're good, man. Uh, so uh, welcome back, everybody. Sorry it's been so long. Uh, we were getting the uh, the studio set up. Shout out to Bo, who's behind the camera, as always. Uh, he did a great job of uh, helping us get set up. So uh, let's get some housekeeping out of the way real quick. Uh, so uh, we've got a, uh, a new sponsor, uh, OSPOP, O-S-S-P-O-P dot com. Uh, Persevere over pressure is what the P-O-P stands for. You see their, uh, their sticker back there on the, uh, on the vinyl banner. Uh, super big shout out to them. They gave us some t-shirts. We have some, uh, some coupon codes that we're going to give away, awesome. uh, for, for people that, whose questions we answer today. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions. We usually give out two bottles of CBD and at least two shirts. So we do a $50 gift code to, uh, to choke responsibly who has our t-shirts. Uh, so we're not going to do choke responsibly shirts. We're going to do O's pop and we're going to do some CBD, right, Justin? Yep. Sure. So good. I right. found some shirts this time too. Ah, oh, there we go. Even better. So you get, oh, yeah, get yeah. it up. Like so we're gonna get a couple of t-shirts, a couple of CBD Whatever. bottles uh, out. Uh, I'll, I'll All right. Awesome. I appreciate it. Um, so as always, uh, mm. you can check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're always at Jujitsu Dummies. Um, uh, I E S at the end, and. Um, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a little extra something. So we're giving away a lot of stuff today, guys. So we're gonna do a little something different with Choke Responsibly, who uh, you know for, uh, who has our st- stuff on their uh, uh, host our podcast tour. So we're gonna do for anybody watching the YouTube video right now. We're not live. We're, we're doing this recorded. So when we release this episode, uh, if you uh, f- subscribe to our channel, like the video, and comment. You're going to be entered to win a $50 gift code for anything you want from the podcast store. Nice. Okay. So we're going to do that. That's us. Um, my man, Justin over here is going to do some CBD and some t-shirts, which is awesome. Thank you. And then we're going to have Ospop uh, is going to give away two t-shirts, uh, two coupon codes for two she- t-shirts from their website as well. So thank you to everybody. I love this new shirt. Uh, this is an Ospop. And obviously we got fight back uh, yeah, over here as well. Great. Janet too. Janet's got an Ospop t-shirt on as well. Um, yeah, if uh, if you want to send questions um, through questions. social media, you can send it to info at dummies dot com. We're going to get them all uh, today. We're going to focus on CBD. Uh, we have Justin here, so we're going to focus on some of the questions that we got for uh, specifically for CBD. But uh, uh, just a, a quick reminder too: if you do order, when you do order, and you should be ordering from Fight Back CBD, uh, go to fightbackcbd.com. You can use coupon code JJD. Uh, and you get 15% off. So, uh, again, big shout out to uh, to Justin for letting us do that. Uh, go around the room. All right. Let's what do, do it. we got here today? We got Big Raul. Big Raul. <laughs> we got, what was my cadence again? I don't know. Uh, so, uh, Raul, uh, four stripe white belt. Um, really. It's almost blue. It's it's close. almost it's blue. Close. But I'm really going to finally get the blue and then, you know, finally quit. Um, <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm uh, rolling at Temple um, Jiu-Jitsu okay. in Del Rey. Uh, out. Professor Sean Ambrosino. Uh, and if I could, if I could give a shout out to uh, uh, four of the uh, or five of the um, Jeez, classmates. Five? Five? <laughs> five of the classmates who are who went Jeez. to a tournament today in Coral Springs. Okay. All right. So, new breed, new uh, and, and from what I understand, one of them um, actually uh, caught a submission while he was getting taken down, submitted the guy while nice. he was getting taken very down. Cool, very so cool. So shout out to J- uh, Jacob, Sean, Calvin, Lee, and Erica. Nice. Uh, I hope Great all job, of you Bob. got the gold. Bring it in. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very cool. Again, going around the room, we got Justin on the screen. Justin, we're going to get into a bigger mm-hmm. intro with you guys, but Justin McClenny. McClenny, right? Is that how you say your last name? Yeah. McClenny yeah, from Fight Back CBD. We're going to get back around to him. Uh, Milton Campus, Purple Belt, uh, Fight Sports Coral Springs. Um, I conceived this whole disaster of an idea. <laughs> Actually, it's been really great. Uh, I bounced this idea for Bo a while back. He was he loved the idea. We got it going. Uh, you guys were the inspiration. I had like really cool conversations with each one of you at different times. Uh, the guy that grabbed Janet's boobs. 
Um, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> when she, <laughs> she was pulling him into her guard. Uh, that was a great story. And right after that story, like two days later, I'm like, guys, I, I think we should have Janet on. It, it was great. It was perfect. Uh, and just, you know, beers and uh, and dinner with uh, Raul Jr., Mauricio, who's not with us today. But uh, every time I came out of the conversations with you guys, I, I, I thought I was like, I wish we recorded that. I wish that a white belt could hear this conversation about, you know, just kind of where we've been. So uh, big shout out to you guys. Big shout out to all our listeners. Uh, but uh, that's me. I'm Janet. I'm a blue belt at Fight Sports Coral Springs. Yeah. There you go. Are you still coaching? I am. Are you still coaching little awesome. guys, right? Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Working at and this school. You got you went to New Breed today, right? I did. Yeah. It's so exciting. Our, shout our, out some of the who, who you you were telling me some stories before about some of the winners or oh, Um, so shout out to Alex, Janellis, and Lucas. Yeah. Woo! All right. Good job, Good job, guys. guys. Oh, Alex, yeah. Alex, great with heart. The, Alex with the with the cool no, hair, not that no, Alex. Little okay. One. Oh, little a little one. smaller Alex. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. They did a great job. Awesome. Good job, guys. And we got my man over here. Junior. Junior Vega. Nice. Fight Sports Coral Springs. Black belt. Which, Black belt. Um, what you been up to? You've been traveling. We we get you for these small, like I've been getting hurt. One week. <laughs> and hurt. Dealing with injuries, man. Yeah. Old. Yeah. The and injuries. Yeah, man. We call them, my Shoulders, dad calls it the Biahitis. Back, <laughs> neck, everything. Yeah. Man. Everything. Oh, oh, boy. Are you gonna be out for a little bit? Yeah, shoulders messed up, man. Yeah. 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 Oh, little pinch nerve, right. but I got a little something too. I I only rolled three times this month. But a uh, little pain. But uh, doctor says it's not a hernia, so that's good. But I uh, got X-rays and MRIs coming, so we'll see. Just put some tape on it, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's put some, some CBD dirt. on it. Rub a, uh, uh, rub, 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 yeah, rub some dirt. Rub a little yeah. CBD on it, right? That's that's what I usually do. Man. <laughs> Spit and so rub some dirt. So let's get to my man over here, Justin. Uh, I just want to say. Uh, you know, we got introduced uh, from one of our podcast patrons, uh, somebody, uh, James Fisher. He's a brown belt uh, at Valor BJJ. BJJ. Um, he sent me uh, just a message. He's like, check you out. I, I don't know exactly how it all went down, but I gave you a shout out. You were all about getting involved. Um, just another quick shout out. We got uh, Chuck Reddor, one of our podcast patrons as well. What's going on, Chuck? CJ Carroll. Uh, Mission 22, we love you guys. Uh, we'll give you another shout out towards the end of the episode as well. Yeah. But James specifically, he uh, he introduced us. He said to check you out. And like I said, the rest is history. We're on episode seven. You've given away uh, some CBD to uh, to each one of our, uh, our, our, our listeners uh, who submitted questions. So, you know, thank you a lot, man. It, it's definitely helped us uh, get on the map. And uh, I know a lot of people that, that watch us, uh, you know, actually knew you first. So uh, we appreciate it. Uh, much respect. Um, hey, man. So no when I reached out to you uh, the other day and I told you that we were going to be doing, uh, you know, we're m moving the, the the studio to my home uh, and then, uh, you know, yeah. we wanted something more permanent. And then, uh, you know, we talked by phone. I, I was just calling you to invite you on, you know, have you on for 10 or 15 minutes. And the second sure. you started telling me your story, you were like, I'm a social worker. I'm this, I'm that, I'm doing this. I'm a dad. I've got two kids. I was like, this is, a, this is, we need, this is, this is an hour episode. We need some time. Sure. So, so, so go ahead and tell, let's go ahead and tell the world a little bit about you. Introduce yourself. Tell us, uh, you know, what you do and, and, you know, your, your story. Sure. Uh, so where would I start? Um, I guess, you know, people, I guess, you know, with the CBD stuff, people will always want to know like, well, why? Why'd you start a CBD company? Why you do that? You know, there's so many, like we were talking, man, it's kind of like the same with y'all, you know, everyone wants to be doing a podcast and yeah. that's the same thing. Everyone wants to be doing CBD. So there's always competition. And I think like me and like you got, you guys, we do things that kind of set us apart from, from other people, you know yeah. what I mean? And so whenever I got into the CBD thing, uh, well, I'm like y'all. I train too. I, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but I've broken my hands and all that stuff, and always, you know, gripping, and my hands are always fucked up. Basically, yeah. I, it hurts. You know, my arms would be going numb from the elbows down. I wake up, can't feel my arms. Just hand and uh, carpal tunnel. <laughs> stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, and I, and like I told you before, I'm sober. Um, I've been. Um, yeah, I guess we can get into that stuff later too. But you know, I had my own. Uh, history, <laughs> I guess you'd say, and and so things for when it comes to pain relief, I'm kind of limited on on what I could do, you know okay. what I mean. And uh, you know, I, I had seen Nate Diaz <laughs> talking about CBD, and I'm yeah, like, man, that's some fucking 
that's just some weed shit, dude. That's yeah. just some hippie shit. That ain't nothing. I'm not doing that. But I was just desperate, dude. And um, and so I tried to, I, when I tried CBD and my hands felt better. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. And um, basically, man, I, I thought I could, I've seen all the, I've seen all these brands out there. Everything's super expensive for one. I don't understand why. Um, the second thing is I, I don't see a lot of companies trying to, to help like our community, gotcha, but yeah. they try to, they definitely want to take money from the community. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and like I said, my history of being sober, being in recovery, I thought I could kind of combine my passions, I guess, and do something, a company that's focused on, on the jujitsu uh, community and focused on, um, on the CBD and being affordable for people. Right. Cause gotcha. like, dude, everyone's going to the, I don't know how much it is where y'all train, but dude, it's not cheap to train jujitsu. All right. I can go to gold's gym and lift weights for 20 bucks a month, dude. Yeah. All right. But go to a, a, a gym, it's a hundred, 150, hundred dollars. And then to expect someone on top of that to give me, uh, oh, yeah, give us $75 a month for CBD. That, that's just unmanageable for most people. So anyways, that was kind of my, my, my little, little way in of, like, I want to focus on my thing, what I do. I'm not worried about anyone else. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking, dude, I don't spend money on advertising. I don't try to do this and that. I, I focus on, on my people, you know what yeah. I mean, and trying to be the – I feel like when I started doing this, there wasn't really anyone else. It wasn't really too many brands that were coming from within this jujitsu community. A lot coming from outside in, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I was just trying to do yeah. something different. That's that's kind of the story of Fight Back, and um, what I wanted to do with money. And I've been able to do it, and I always want to do more. I'm working on nonprofit stuff. But uh, ever since I've started, dude, I'll put out posts or I'll send out messages, put out things on Reddit saying, hey, man, are you sober or are you're working on your mental health? Do you want to try jujitsu? Hit me up. I'll buy you a gi. I'll find you a school. I'll get you in a school for free. Um, whatever it costs, whatever it takes, I'll take care of it. And so anyone listening to this, that goes for y'all, too. If anyone out there, you have a friend, family member, you know, like they, they're working on their recovery and you think that, hey, maybe they want to try BJJ, tell them to hit me up, dude. I'll, I'll get them in. And um yeah, that's it. I'll that's, talk you up, man. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, I know yeah. you, we're talking about – are you doing everything from the profits that you get from Fight Back? You buy a gi, you'll give them money, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. doing it from the profits? Money. Will you take yeah, gis, and do you collect gis yeah, from anyone yeah. else? We talked about that a little bit the other day. Would you take gis or like – have people send old keys or is that a no no or is it all about just new both, both, both man yeah. uh, mostly i've just been buying them dude all yeah. um i looked into some different brands and you know i've, I've made my own key for fight back before okay. too but usually i mean i'll just go on amazon and order a key and deliver it to someone's house dude I mean, okay that's what i do or if the school they're gonna go to say they're gonna come train with y'all and y'all school says oh we sell this key i'll buy that one yeah from the school. okay that's what it takes very um, cool. Sometimes, you know, a lot of the 10th Planet schools, um, some of the bigger ones, too, bigger name people. I mean, they've helped me out and got students in, so they don't have gi, yeah. so that's a little bit better. I'll okay. buy them oh, that's right, right. It's all, uh, it's all no gi, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, man, I mean, that's what I did. Um, I wouldn't say I don't want to put any, like, um, false information out there and be like, yeah, I'm 100% nonprofit. Yeah. It's not like that. But um, so I don't want people to get twisted up. But on the other hand, I haven't ever really paid myself anything from yeah. this company. So I got gotcha. Take that for what what it's worth. So so know? what's to tell us about the day job? I think you told me you were a social worker, right? How long has you been doing? Yeah, this? yeah man. Um, so, oh, dude, like for the last ten years, well, it's longer than that. But for for ten years or so, I mean, I'm a I'm a licensed counselor. So I was a counselor working, um, actually working in an HIV clinic. Okay. Uh, with people who use substances, so they had dual things going on in mental health. Uh, and then I did street outreach, so I'd go out into the community and, and reverse overdoses, you know, help people get into treatment, all that kind of stuff. Um, I did that for a long time, and I love that work, man. That's that's like it's it's high intensity, great work. Wow. Um, and then from, from there, I, I, I became like a trainer, so I would go around all the state training training different teams at like health departments and mental health clinics that train their staff on how to do this type of work. And now, uh, 
I guess I don't want to get it too much into my current job, but I okay. have a, a kind of a high level, high level role where I work um, with different teams all over the state. Okay, you know? so very that, cool. That makes sense. Janet has a kind of work. Janet things. has a question for you. How long? How long have you been doing this? Do you want know what, what working or, or fight back? You're a fight back. Fight back. So I guess officially, um, I've been doing this about two years and. Before that, when I first started out, it was just to like, um, you know, family and, and like my teammates basically at the gym. Uh, you know, I guess you could say it's maybe old old ways of thinking, but I'm like, hey, if I buy a big supply, I can get mine free. You know, that yeah. works for me. So, you know, I was like, I'll start a company and just, you know, supply my teammates and stuff and, and, and try to make it cheap for everybody. And yeah, and then from there, it just built. So I guess officially to the public about two years or so okay. i've been doing that on through my website and my instagram so i know raul you had a good story on the last uh, one of the last podcasts we talked about about fight back um you weren't using the cbd yourself but you sent it to tell, tell your story <laughs> yeah so i sent it to my father-in-law he got into a pretty bad car accident eons ago uh they fused his spine and he's been living with pain pretty much since before i met him uh, I went ahead uh, when we got our first free CBD. Thank you, by the way. Uh, I sent it right to him, um, and he loves it. He loves it, man. Uh, it, it cuts down forty to fifty percent of his pain. Uh, he did try CBD before, but it was like you said, expensive, so it wasn't feasible for him to constantly get it. So, thank you so much for that. He really loves it. Yeah, man. I, and I, I always work with people too because uh, I get it, man. I try to keep my stuff low price but i understand sometimes that's still too much for people so i always tell people hey man just send me a message you know i send free shit out all the time dude i, I can't even i mean i don't know how much we were talking the other day me and milton i mean probably fifty thousand dollars worth of free stuff i've sent out including you know this this year and sponsorships and just people will send me a message so i don't want to get a, a torrential flood of like people asking for free stuff <laughs> but if you got to Hey, I get it though, man. If, if, if now's not the time when you got some when you, when you can't afford it, that's cool. Hit me up, and then you can catch me and catch me back later. It's all good. That's um, awesome. But like you said too, something else you said, man, is that's what I tell people because sometimes people think um, it's going to go from a level ten to a zero, and I don't make any promises for people. But hey, dude, like I was saying with my hands, if it went from a like ten, where I was thinking about like I don't even know if I can do key grappling anymore, dude. Because my hands hurt. If it takes that down to a, a six and it's manageable, yeah. shit, I'm I'm happy I'm right on there. The mat. Yeah, I was the taking mat. Uh, yeah. I was taking 2,400 milligrams of Advil a day, and my mom was like, wow. you know that shit's gonna be that's bad for your heart and all this, and uh, I don't take that no more. So it's it's good for me. And, and like you said, if it takes it down 50 percent of his pain. You know, and save the other stuff for times when it gets unbearably worse. Then, right. then that's yeah. a win. Right. All what right. belt are you? Yeah. yeah, we we never asked you. Oh, y'all never asked me about my training. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, oh, your uh, your belt. What what belt rank are you? What's that? What what's your belt rank? Or I'm a blue belt with uh, y'all do stripes out there. I do, yeah. I have, yeah. I have three stripes. Okay. Nice. So, yeah. so wait, is it more like uh, be, are you not doing gi anymore? And like, well, how long have you been training? How long? How many years? Yeah, yeah. So when I was um when I was younger, man, I did um, some wrestling and stuff. Uh, nothing like I wasn't ever like good or serious about it. And then you know I've I've always been into MMA and grappling and stuff ever since I was a kid, and uh, had done um. Kind of more Noki, like catch style, submission grappling stuff, um, striking, Muay Thai set stuff. And uh, uh, that was when I was younger, man. And then, like I said, I had my own drug drug and alcohol problems, dude. And I, I can never take anything in life serious. And uh, that, that took a big portion of my, um, of my uh, life away, I guess. And then once I got sober, I was about 30. And from there, I didn't. I never really did anything serious, and was working on my recovery. But yeah, about four. You know, I have kids. Um, I think I told you that my yeah. daughter's seventeen, and my my son is eleven. My daughter's been training martial arts since she was like six. You okay. know, she's done everything. And the kids were doing um, MMA type uh, no gi stuff. Okay. And uh, and they started doing gi gi grappling, and they were like, "Oh, come on, you need to go," because I was always. 
showing them like, not do this or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, but like I told him, I said, Hey man, I'm all or nothing. So yeah. I understand that. I understand the commitment. You don't just put your foot in and then step out. That ain't the yeah. way it works. And that's what I've been telling him. I'm like, don't get me in there because, um, I'm all or nothing. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, so that's the way it went. I told them now they're not allowed to quit. I said they could quit, uh, when they get their black belt or when I die, whichever one. <laughs> so, like, I'm like, go ahead and start praying for my death. Cause, uh, you know, uh, that, but, that, yeah, so they do. Yeah. They both, they both do, do jujitsu and, and, and stuff like that too. So, but anyways, yeah, I, I train, um, where I train is called sinister BJJ. We're uh-huh. in Austin. We're a uh, small school. Lynn Hughes is my coach. He's a black belt. Delua Cart Delua uh, is our uh, our head um, professor coach from okay. USA yeah. from Texas, and it's under Andre Tim Montiero, um, A Force Jiu Jitsu out of New York. So okay. and then above that, Carlson Gracie fight team. So okay, you know. So that's our so lineage. That, that actually place. leads me to when you're talking about your kids, it leads me to one of the questions here. And you guys, if you got the questions open, mm-hmm. you can ask. I'll, I'll defer to you on some of these questions too. But you mentioned you have kids. Would you say 18 and 11? Right. Uh, so we did have we did have a listener submit a question that said that was basically asking about uh, CBD for teens. You know what could uh, it, you know do, like yeah you you have teenagers are they using CBD and I think that comes from a little bit more of a place of people worrying about oh my god it's CBD it's marijuana you know uh, so uh, can you can you uh, address that at all? Well, I don't, I don't ever give anyone like uh, medical advice and say hey do this do that don't do this don't do that that's not really my place. Mm-hmm. But as far as CBD as a as a whole. Um, one of the big things that got this whole thing jumped off was that it, they, they were using it for kids in the replacement of their epilepsy medication because yeah. it brings the seizures down to like, from like, it'll, it'll reduce the seizures like 90% or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you know? I've read that. And so kids, little kids, like five, six, seven, eight, you mm-hmm. know, 10, they were the, kind of the ones who were the first ones in the U.S. who were, you know, um, getting i guess notoriety for using it so people if there's a history of of young kids and teens using it um as far as like someone who's 16 17 you know a lot of times they don't have um you know chronic pain or anything yeah. like that but if they're training and they feel like that it would help them after training i mean i would say sure it's not it's not going to get them high um yeah. they're not gonna you know uh it's like i said i'm not a doctor uh, I would feel that it's. Uh, I would feel, from my personal opinion, it's probably better than than taking, you know, Advil mm-hmm. every single day. You gotcha. Know, pain. Gotcha. So. So would you so, yeah, say? So like I said, I would tell them to research it a little bit if they're thinking about giving it to their kids. I, I know a lot of people that buy my product. They buy it specifically for their kids, and a lot of times it's kids that they say um, have. Um, anxiety and mental health stuff or, or like um, autistic spectrum disorders and they and they're just trying anything to say yeah to see well maybe this will help a little bit too so i get a lot of parents reach out to me for that for, so the parents that come and talk to you about that for their kids do they feel like they need to talk to their pediatrician first or not necessarily um, you know I, I i would say that could be a good idea. I wouldn't, it depends on where you're at though. Right. Like I'm in Austin, Texas. So, uh, the pediatrician here might, they might have an understanding of CBD. Right. And be like, yeah, that's cool. I'm sure there's doctor offices that sell it. Right. Mm -hmm. So they might be, that's cool. But if you're out in the middle of somewhere where people aren't up up to date, Mm -hmm. they might not understand what it is. So you have to like consider the source, I guess. I I would expect that uh, it's a good question. And I would expect that some people might, would you think they're looking to CBD as more of a last, a last ditch effort? I've gone to the doctor and nothing's working. Like I know what you're talking about with the seizures, that whole thing was what the, that Charlotte's web brand was the one that was, they got on CNN and then it, right. They've, this is what's kind of led to this kind of revolution, at least from the way I understand it. You know, right. They have, you know, I don't ever talk. Well, I I wouldn't say it like that. I probably do talk shit a lot, but (laughs) I, I would say that there's like, there's some brand that's back. It goes back to what I was saying, right? You can go on brands' websites and they're like, "We're all about da 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 and helping and da da da." And then you look at the 
price and it's like damn you must be helping rich people because i don't know who yeah. can afford that shit right? yeah you know when yeah. it's not, when something costs 120 dollars for the same size that i sell for like 36 you, 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 I, I just want people out there to know that these are products that come from a lab dude mm -hmm. so all these pictures of fields of hemp and premium this and oh this and that and uh, it's all bullshit it's marketing all right this stuff comes from the labs you read the lab work and, and use your use your brain like um, you don't need to line someone's pockets so they can so they can get like that so that the first question yeah. we had about the teens was from Luis Rojas Martinez definitely wanted to give him a shout out but we also we had one uh let's see what's his name uh Dean uh his name is uh Dean JM hold on one second let me uh uh his screen name is Dean JM 1587 it doesn't show his name on his Instagram um he's saying what's the best way to tell garbage CBD made in a dirty shed that's I'm quoting him yeah <laughs> Uh, you know, to the best stuff that uh, that I've tried. You know, uh, he's he said uh, he's from Australia. I think you might actually know yeah. this guy. He shouted you out directly. Yeah. Yeah. Down under. Yeah, awesome. It sounds That's familiar. Amazing. Yeah, from down yeah, under. In, in the U.S., in the U.S., we're a little bit luckier in a way that, that there's more brands out there that have more transparency. But some of the like people who are in Australia or, or New Zealand, I, had, I just I have so many people over there. And they, they're getting ripped off. I mean, that happens here, too. I'll give you all this. Don't ever buy shit from the corner store. Yeah. Just stick away from it. Don't do it. But, um, but yeah, they, they so the really, as far as, like, the question is, like, how do I tell? That's the thing. Most of the time, you can't, right? Yeah. You can't tell. So you really need to use, um, make sure you go with brands that, that are, that, that, um, have some level of transparency. You know, people can ask me anything. I, they, if they send me a message, it goes to me. It doesn't go to the sales department. I'll tell them whatever. And, uh, and you know, I post the lab work that uh, on my website. So, you know, if you don't use me, that's cool. But make sure you use somebody who's legit and has, a, has some level of online presence or business presence and, and post that lab work because yeah. if not – who knows? Who knows? I have a bottle of your CBD in my hand, and it and it says a small batch, handcrafted, Austin, Texas, and then the date. Yeah. Um, is is the date important yeah. for CBD? I mean, is it just for labeling? Well, you know, what what well, is that? What does that really signify? The reason I the reason I use the green bottles is because um, any type of uh, cannabinoid, it doesn't matter which if it's CBD, THC, whatever. Um, you really can't let that stuff be sitting out in the direct sunlight for you know months at a okay. time. It's gonna it's gonna degrade the effectiveness. And then also, oil is like any kind of oil. You know, people will leave bottles of olive oil sitting on their counter for two years, right? Um, it's sealed. Their sunlight's not hitting it. It's still good, right? But at some point, oil just from being oxidized itself can kind of get go rancid and taste really gross. So I, I tell people my stuff, I think long as you keep it good and not out in the sunlight and all that, it should be good for at least two years, you know, okay. just keep it sealed. Don't leave the top off it. Um, yeah, it, it'll stay fresh. It'll stay good. And most of the time people are using it quicker than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Hey, this but is junior. Put the date on there just so people know. Cause, um, cause like it says small batch, right? So yeah. I don't, I don't get like, 5,000 bottles at a time from a lab that they stickered for, for that it's their shit. They just put my sticker on it. A lot of brands out there are like that. I don't do that. I do everything myself. So the reason the dates are on there is it, co it corresponds to the, um, the batch of, uh, of materials that, of the labs that are posted on the website. So people can look and see, Oh, this was from then. That's, that's the lab that goes with this one. Okay. It's like a batch number type deal. And then they know when it, when they got it too. So that's, that's the reason I did that. Good. And then it has that hand touch, you know, I don't have okay. to put the date on there. I okay. just wanted people to know that I was the one doing it. It was one of the first things I noticed when you sent them to me the first time was, was yeah. the date. And I was like, okay, I, I like this. It feels a little bit more personal. I didn't know what it meant. It felt good. <laughs> it's just the day that it was ordered, the day yeah. that it, the day that it was bottled. Okay, yeah, very so cool. So that way, people know when they got it. It's like a, it's not really an expiration date. It's like a, a a creation date, I guess. Okay, let me hand it over to Junior. Junior had a question for you as well. Hey, Justin, how's it going? It's Junior. What's up, bro? Hey, they kept they kept me caged up too long. I couldn't, <laughs> resist. I couldn't resist anymore. I'm over here rocking a fight back CBD T-shirt, man, looking good. 
as I always do. Get that sh- video here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so here's a question. Here's a question for me. Do you need to build a therapeutic level uh, with CBD? So is it something that you can just use for one month and one bottle's worth and you're good? Or do you recommend therapeutic level and that way people can better understand how they need to purchase Fight Back CBD? Yeah, that's a good question, man. I, I think everyone's different in a way. Uh, the reason I do mine for, um, and I'll explain a little bit more too, but the reason I do mine at 20 milligrams and one dropper is just if you look across the board at most com- most brands, people consider that to be like a good average starting dose for people. So it's really easy to measure out on my dropper. It has a number on there. You just fill it up. It's good to go. So that was the rationale around around the, the um the uh, milligrams, I guess you'd say. And as far as like therapeutic levels or whatever, like I said, everyone's different. I personally don't think it's a good idea to be like, I need to do 300 milligrams of CBD a day. I I just, it's just my own personal opinion. I don't think it's, um, I don't think your body's going to be able to process that. I mean, it's a cannabinoid, right? Think about like weed. You can only smoke so much. You can keep smoking, but you ain't getting more high. You know, so it CBD is the same. There's a there's going to be. I'm going to test that. I, I might I might have to test that. I might have to test. Uh-huh. I might have to test that. <laughs> yeah, you have to research. I, I might have to research that one a little bit. But go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, but I think um, I think if it's for um, if it's for like mood and things like that, I think it's good to just do it right in the morning, like you would take your medication. If it's for like pain, um, like for training, people who are training, I think it's great after training. Um, some people might feel that, that they would rather do it beforehand, you know, like an hour mm. before training, sure. just based on their on what they're working on. But um, it's really up to people to figure out what they feel is giving them the the, um, the relief they're looking for or the, or the effect they're looking for. Um, and it does have uh, – people will say that it has like a – kind of a reverse tolerance is what people say. I don't really like that way of phrasing it, but basically what they mean is that that over time it kind of builds up your, in your in your system a little bit, so that actually a lower dose it would have the same effectiveness as like if you were taking a higher dose. Does that make okay. sense? Because it kind of like builds up within your system. So that's the therapeutic so level you were kind of talking mm-hmm. about. Junior was kind of talking about like a therapeutic level. You don't necessarily need to build yeah. up, but it yeah. does build up over time potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my girl, she uh, she's a stylist, you know, a hair stylist, and she gets that sciatica back, um, whatever it is, the pain sciatica shit. Yeah. And for her, <laughs> it 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 takes a couple days before it really kicks in, and she doesn't really feel that pain anymore. Yeah. But for me, like with hands, I could tell maybe because the pain is just there, and I'm so used to it, I could tell like that first day. You know, yeah. I was like, damn, it feels great. So, hey, Justin, let's see those knuckles, man. Let's see what those knuckles look like. Huh? Let's see what those knuckles look like. Oh, uh, they look all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that's the one that's the worst. I broke my hand on this side, so it's all like a hook. But uh, it's my right hand is that where I don't do a lot of that spider guard shit and all that. <laughs> that's what, yeah, that'll get you. Excellent grips. That would definitely that get gee, you. That gee that stuff. Um, <laughs> Does somebody want to read off one of the uh, questions there? I like the gee. I like the gee a lot, man, because it's slower and I'm old, so that, that helps me. <laughs> Word. Somebody who's got uh, ask that well done question. Somebody want to grab that one? Oh, well by the way, answer. here's a. Uh, we almost forgot something yeah. here from Dean JM fifteen seventy eight. He says, "P.S. Australia loves you, mate." <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my best Australian accent. So yeah. I just want to throw that one. You in. know him. You see, you know him. He is he. Uh, is he someone that you? Uh, oh, Australia, Australia is the shit, man. People there are awesome, dude. Australia, New Zealand. That's my people right there. Very cool. Okay, so here's a question. I think it has to do a lot with the education piece because there's not that much information out there yet to let people know about the benefits of CBD. So what they're saying is a question that's being asked here by Well Done Underscore Inc. What benefits does CBD give that marijuana THC doesn't, and is one superior to the other? That's the question. Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I, I would say that it depends on what you're looking for, really. I mean, uh, you might say THC greatly enhances mood for <laughs> some people. You know, for me, for me, it's kind of the opposite. I, I don't know what it is. I don't smoke now. I'm sober, but even um, – Towards the end of my using days, 
smoking like gets me anxiety and, and mm. like, I don't like it. You know, for me, THC doesn't work. I can't, I couldn't use it. So if that was the option, it wouldn't be an option for me. And, and CBD I think is, is good for people who, who are in situations like me or, or they're in situations where they don't want to be high or they can't be high or they can't fail, um, drug tests, that's that nice. kind of thing. Um, uh, THC is probably better. I would say it at, 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 at the, all the stereotypical stuff, you know, hunger and, uh, awesome. and helping people to get appetite and stuff like that. I think they go great together for a lot of people. Some people like even amounts, some people like more of one or the other. It's up to, it's up to that person. Um, if they're lucky, it happened to be in a legal state, you know, they can go to the, to the dispensary and get different ratios of THC and, and CBD. You know, my stuff is THC free. And what that means is it doesn't necessarily mean 100% like zero, 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 because in these products, there's always going to be something with the, unless it's an isolate base. And, um, so it might be 0. 0.006 or something like that. Sure. And, and if you look on my bottle tests, it'll say it's not detected. And if you look on the labs for the, um, for the, uh, Distillate the, the, ba the base base materials. It's the cutoff level is 0.1 percent, and it's below that, or yeah, below that. So it doesn't even show up either. Mm -hmm. uh, most CBD that is that is they call full spectrum is like that 0.3 percent THC. Um, I've done both. I've done my THC free. I've done full spectrum. I've done isolate. I've done shatter. I've done wax. I've done flower. I've done it all. For me personally. I don't notice much difference between any of the methods. They all seem to work for me. Even the isolate worked good for me as far as my hands felt better. Um, I feel like I feel like if people really want THC, the 0.3 is probably not enough either. If they really want the benefits from THC, they're probably going to need to go to like a, a 20 to 1, so like a 5% THC, something like that. But that's just my personal opinion. So you the know, concern... If you want THC, uh, you need more than 0.3. Personally, so, that's what my opinion. So, Justin, for the concern of those people that are afraid to take Fight Back CBD, there's no there's a, there's a no psychoactive ingredients that no, give people that no, high. No psychoactive. No psychoactive. And, um, and, and I've never, you know, I've been doing it for this long and I've posted, I've posted videos on my page. I should do another one. Cause I think maybe people like it. It's kind of gross or whatever, but I'll take a P test and I'll post it and show people that I do this shit every day and I pass. Um, you know, so it'll help people set their mind at ease because a lot of people, I work with a lot of people who are firefighters, uh, EMTs, police, mm -hmm. uh, uh, military, they definitely have zero tolerance on, on, on failing THC tests. If you're in those careers, you better not fail because that's not good. Um, for everyone else, maybe maybe there's a little more uh, leniency. Uh, but I also work with people who are in UFC and they're in they get tested in USADA and people who do uh, Olympic level judo and get tested for that. And so on those kind of things, if you're gonna if you're gonna be tested in that week of your competition, um, don't use anything with THC that's gonna pop you because you don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. If you pop for any reason. Um, that's not good. So, yeah, good so just, advice, just check yeah. the labels and make sure that you're doing something um, that's going to be within the limits that you, you don't fail. All right. Uh, they, they let the monkey out the box. I'm not done yet. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So, um, so you threw me off, man. So I'll go with your <laughs> question. Bro's got a question. Bro's got a question, and I, and I want to preface this by this is a listener question. It happens to be a, hus sure. it happens to be a husky individual. Raul is a husky individual. So am I. I didn't ask him to read this question only because he's husky. It's because it was the last question. So don't get offended. Sure. They, went out, they went out to dinner <laughs> together. That's why. Yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> yeah, now I can't find a question. I know, okay, okay. Get thrown okay. So uh, JLSF1981 uh, J says, I'm a husky gentleman. Does CBD work by height or is it one dosage fits all? Uh, you know, I think that kind of relates to that other question in a way. You know, body size is body is 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 body size, right? Uh, well, like y'all, y'all probably heard too. Like with with people who smoke, that they say if you have a lot of body fat, it'll stay 
it, it'll lodge in your in the fat, I guess, as people will fail tests easier. That doesn't mean you're getting better effects, right? Um, so I would think I would think that people I would imagine that around the same height in in weight disregarding the, the the body fat perspective i would imagine that it's a similar a similar size dose if that makes sense because your body your body fat isn't going to give you necessarily more um cannabinoid receptors in your body you know okay. so does it, does it take a skinny person one bong hit and and a fat person takes three and they're the same level of stone i mean i don't know dude that's a hard <laughs> question to answer I would think, though, that body size, people need to kind of figure out where they're at. A lot of times I tell people start with half a dose. Try half, man, because guess what? If, if you feel good on a half, fuck it, stick with that. Guess why? Your shit lasts twice as long. You know, um, I'm all about that. I'm always about less is more, man. Take the least amount possible to get the effect you want. So if you, if you feel like that one and a half doses is better, and that's – your least effective, uh, least amount, then do that. But if you can get away with trying a half, try that. And so people need to figure out within their own body where um, what what works for them. All right, now I've got a really. I, I know that's a I know that's a long answer that was actually a non-answer. <laughs> I, I gotta let's get away from the CBD for a second. Um, I have been wanting to ask this group this question. I'll let Justin chime into this as well. How how often are you guys washing your belt? <laughs> Belt's magical, man. You never <laughs> don't wash your belt. Belts, All right. Belts don't get Just, washed. Justin's every day. Ju- every uh, junior? day. Every day. After if you roll, if you use it, you should be washing yeah. it, right? See, here's here's my you concept. Here's my concept on that. That's right? too no, um, this is um, my um, belt. I wash it. No, okay. I shouldn't say that. I usually wash it maybe once a week or every like Two times I trained, something like that, but I well, wash it often. <laughs> this month it's been once a month. <laughs> I'm hearing you washed it one time, like after you got it. Wait, hold on one second. I'm on your team here now. I'm on your side. <laughs> Junior, how, how often do you wash your belt? Have I've you ever my, washed it? I've had my black belt for almost two years, a year and a half, year and a half. I've never, maybe once have I washed that belt. Are you kidding me? No. Why? And I'll tell you why. Because my because belt, all the jujitsu power is in the belt, right? That's what course, you've been told. Yes. That's, yeah. <laughs> Blood, sweat, for and sure, tears. For sure. Ugh. No, but no, honestly, my belt does not get as sweaty as my gi gets. I my agree. gi gets dripping. It's not your sweat. Belt. It's it's the, everyone else's sweat. It's my sweat. It's his sweat. It's her sweat. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter to me. There's powers in that it sweat. It matters to me I've the next time we roll together. No, but my my belt doesn't. Well, I smell my belt. My I mean, it's not special. Stinky. Your belt is special. Well, it's, it's and even before hey, that, even before that, get used to their own stench, man. Yeah, don't, uh, don't rely on your yeah, own nose. Get someone yeah. else to smell it. Janet, how often do you wash your belt? I'm with Junior. Ah, oh, really? I'll Janet, hand dry that. I'll hand dry it. Like I don't roll no, it up and throw it in a bag. Please, I'll hand dry say it isn't so. I do the same thing yeah. when I get home. I take my gi out. I'll hang it or wash it. I'd the hang belt it. hangs over and it dries. I think I've had my blue belt for a couple years now, and um. Maybe once or twice. Oh man, well. I, I've never replaced the belt either. Like I wear that belt until it falls apart. Okay, it's like a gray belt, yeah. Yeah. Right. regardless of color. No, oh, yeah, I, I can't believe that washing a belt is a thing. It's even a conversation. <laughs> On which side of it, though? Amen, brother. Amen. Like, you Preach. Wash it or you don't wash it. Like I, I don't understand why you would wash it. It's like it he comes off it. after the in the middle of the first roll. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you know, that's it's barely exactly ever on you. Ever. That's a completely different reason. How much you're you're only it wearing it half look the at time. Justin, look at Justin over there. No. I think he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's throwing. So my he's Justin throwing is up. never coming here to roll with any of us. <laughs> 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 no, and you're I've never and, and I've never rolled with anybody I, and I, said, you know what, that belt stinks. Never. The gi, yeah. Yeah, Justin. Go ahead, Justin. Oh, no, I was saying, I understand being nasty. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> and, uh, but, man, like I said, I wash my key and my... I, I throw my shit in the washer and the dryer. I don't even care. Uh, and uh, But what have you, you've always been told... You, you know, it's not for me, it's for you. I, I mean, if I'm nasty, I don't care, but I don't want, I don't want to have to get nasty shit all over everyone else, man. What are you going to feel my. like if they get some kind of staph infection or something? I I see that question, like I uh, I'm in uh, we have our uh, Jujitsu Dummies podcast group, uh, separate from the fan page, right mm-hmm. from the, the the show page. But I also I um, you guys 
follow jujitsu, right? We talked sure, about yeah. this one time. Yeah. yeah. But he's got a really great it's like fourteen, fifteen thousand members. And every other post is a new white belt asking about should he wash his belt? Listen, I might be reading too far into this, but it says a saying says, wash your gi. I might be reading. What, I don't know. Stinky. Janet, what do you think? Am I reading too far into that? Does no. it say wash your gi and your belt? I saw or is the saying only. just wash, wash your gi? So let's get a little deeper into you, this. I got You never it. hear you always hear, I don't want to roll with the person with the, the yellow gi the or the gray gi. You don't. don't hear anybody ever say, whoa, <laughs> not in the black history. belt that's not really black. That anymore. black belt looks nasty. No, nope. I'm going to give, <laughs> give well you guys a little. I'm going to give you a little. I'm going to give you a little room here. Do you not wash it because you don't think it gets dirty? Or do you not wash it because you believe that your jujitsu power is in the belt? Maybe it's like a ceremonial I, thing. You know, it's almost like I just don't wash it. I just don't feel like that it needs to be washed. I, I think you're more like, you know, I, I think it's a ceremonial. There's thing. a little part of me that says, I don't you, think, you know, it's dirty and you just want to rub it in somebody's I don't, face. Here's what I think. too. Wanna, I, don't like, think, I don't think. <laughs> Helio, Helio would probably roll over in his grave right now, knowing that we're having this conversation. No, I'm sure that he no never washed his belt. And uh, Master Carlson I'm sure Gracie, he, watched, I'm he, sure he did not wash his belt either. I just don't get it, man. <laughs> and neither does Professor any... Felipe Amarante. I, I walk into my garage from the car, and I throw my gi top on the ground in the garage, and then I go take a shower or whatever. And But I threw my belt down in the garage, too. And then I take my gi, because I go home wearing my gi pants, but I went to the shower. So then I take him to the garage. I pick all the shit up and throw it in the washer. Sounds uh, like you don't take care of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Janice, yeah, Janice throwing fastballs over here. I, I look, I wash my gi after every I wash my gi after every training session. So do I. And I get I do only because it fades and it falls apart so quickly. You I wait salty. a couple of times. You want to look salty. I want it to I wanna So I, you wash it. It's gonna fade faster. No, so I what you're looking for is to fade faster and just No, I don't want it to fade as fast. So I give it two. I give it two, two training sessions before I wash it. Mm. Mm. Justin Nobody's said, with Justin me on said, this. Buy another one. How many belts you you've gone through, Justin? Because you wash your belt all the time. Did I, how many belts did I fall apart because I wash it? Mm -hmm. Zero. Mm -hmm. You know how many gis I've had fall apart from? Dude, I get a gi. I, first thing I do is put fabric softener on it, <laughs> put it in the hot wash, and I fucking dry it every time too. Guess how many really? gis I've had fall apart from washing and drying. Zero. Yeah. So all Thank these you, shit people are like, don't dry your gi. Dude, I've worn, I, don't I have a flow yeah. gi that I've worn three times a week for four fucking years, and I wash and dry it every time. <laughs> I and wash I, and dry mine. Look good? I don't. I'm not saying it looks good. I don't dry it only because it shrinks on it me. Like yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, but I when you put it on, it stretches it back out. There. Yeah, it's too tight though. I'm a big no, dude. Yeah. Um, right. I yeah. wash and dry yeah. mine. I'm like in between sizes, so I usually need mine to shrink down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, I, like, if it's an A2H, that, that's pretty good for me. But, like, A3 is too big, so I, or, you know, it just depends. Yeah. So, I like them to shrink. That's why I dry it, so it mm -hmm. shrinks a little bit. Because then it gets all fucking stretched out, everyone yanking on my sleeves and shit. So, anyway. I just, I just want to let my co host here know you're all fucking nasty. Wow. Because Thank you should be washing your. I'm yeah. sitting in I your chair. Um, no, you yeah. said gee just now. Don't, let's not get the conversation yeah, twisted. Listen, it's, gi, it's belt we had to Wash your belt, belt. wash your gi, period. It's disgusting. I mean, does your, does your ripstop pants get completely drenched in sweat and gross? Why wash those? They're, they're pretty clean, too. My pants? My pants wash get sweaty. You wash them, right? Yeah, I might wash my pants. I wash my top, and I wash well, my bottom. Wash them. They, they're pretty dry. They're no, no, right. they're, those are not so dry. You're, oh, you're, you're, you're nasty. I usually leave with the yellow straight. If I would have known, if I would have known that she wouldn't be here right now, if I would have known this before. Then you go do the questions. Um, so pet peeves, Justin. You have any pet peeves in your gym? We're just making friends. <laughs> making friends over here. Pet peeves. Um, what is things? That so I don't let me tell you that that's a pet peeve of mine. They're not washing your gi. Uh, we've had uh, long fingernails. My my Justin uh, Junior's is long fingernails. Mine is going to the bathroom barefoot and then stepping on the mat. Oh, it, yeah, all those things are against the rules at our place. Oh God, I hate. All yeah, the rules. If you're gonna get off the mats, put on some shoes or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not like a clean freak or anything. I mean, dude, it's nasty. I mean. 
Does it is someone walking into the bathroom any nastier than them sweating all over the mats? I mean, I don't know, but it does seem grosser, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, you get a, it's just a, I mean, I could see maybe the woman's bathroom, but the men standing up, you get, you know, there's urine on the floor sometimes, maybe a little bit, you know, got the kids' glasses before, they they have really bad aim, you know, and then you're here. <laughs> and then they don't wash it. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, see, you put, yeah, wash, they should wash their belt every time they roll. <laughs> mm, I don't piss on my uh, either. <laughs> pet, so no, no major pet peeves. Oh, not around like hygiene and stuff. My, mine is more. I'm, I gotta think. Uh, oh, I don't. Well, Say I don't it. know, dude. I, I kind of. I guess when people are new and um and and I see them, and not so much with me because I'm kind of I'm 200 pounds, so most people who are new can't really do shit to me, anyways. <laughs> but I hate when I see somebody who like takes one of our little teammates and starts slamming them around or you see them in between rounds. I, I, I don't want to put anyone under the, under the bus. Like I shouldn't be shitting on my teammates. <laughs> they might listen to this. <laughs> so it wasn't at my place. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. And I see a little girl sitting up against the wall and the dude goes, Hey, you want to roll to her? I'm like, no, she's sitting against the wall. She don't want to roll, dude. I'm sitting right here. You know, so that's the kind of shit that, that I think bothers me is when you see people just, um, cause I love rolling with small people, man. That's like my favorite, one of my favorite things. Cause I can move around. I don't have to worry about getting smashed into the mats and stuff like that. So I can work on technique and like positions and, and, and my mobility. But yeah, that's something that I don't have any, tolerance for seeing people that are that are gonna hurt somebody i got you i got you anyone anyone have any questions anybody got any other questions for justin actually uh he answered it with the thc that was a big uh question of mine but you answered it already did you think that did you think that like you could maybe get a little high or that there would be a little thc so i wondered i for sure wondered yeah yeah Yeah, that that, what's the relationship between cbd and thc what you know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't tell you all this either. So about that relationship. So if um, CBD kind of counteracts the psychoactive effect of THC. Oh, so okay. If people, if people did do, so say if someone like me, if I wanted to use THC, I don't really respond well to it. But if I wanted to, something with a higher level of CBD or, or like taking CBD and then taking like one hit of THC, might work better because that's going to counteract that that mental psychoactive part and where just you get more of the body feel and when you're looking for pain relief people are more looking i think for the body they don't really want to get too heady on it and uh, especially if they got shit they got to do and they're not like they don't have that tolerance of like being a daily smoker where it's just normal someone who doesn't have that tolerance they get in that headspace it can kind of disrupt their their day so um definitely cbd can kind of help counteract that so I don't know. That's helpful for some people. If you notice you don't respond well to THC, try some CBD and then and then THC. Very cool. Very cool. Anybody have any other questions for Justin? CBD? Anything else? I have one. So what do you, what do you see? What's the long term goal for fight back CBD? Where where are you looking to be in five ten years? Yeah, man. I'm always I'm always looking for for like the next. Not, not really the next thing I want to jump onto, but, you know, like you said, the next steps. And something I wanted to do is um, – and actually, I'm sa- that's kind of what I've been saving money for is um, as soon as I get this um, – my paperwork done with the IRS, uh, I'm going to take money that I have in my fight back account and drop it into my nonprofit side to, like, start that, jumpstart that. Because what I want to do is similar to, similar to, like, what Guardian Gym did out in Oakland and in Baltimore, is I want to get a space here in Austin that's, like, a nonprofit where people can come and train for free. So if they're, if they, for whatever reason, I'm sure there's multiple reason someone would want to train for free or cheap or like a sliding scale. So that's something that I want to do here in Austin is open up a, a training, like a training institute, I guess you'd say, where, we're, where we have like some weights and mats and, and have people, I'm not going to coach it. I get people to coach and come in um, and do that and be able to do events and things. So that's like my next goal. I was hoping that I could do that to get that rolling by like maybe March of, of 2020. So in like six months from now, um, I don't know if that's going to be an accurate timeline for me or not, but 
but definitely that's something I want to do. Um, cause I just think it would be easier. I, I think it would build up the, um, the brand a little bit to have like a, a base, a home base where I can say, Hey, this is what we're doing. You know, start a new Instagram page for it and everything. And then that way people, when they're, at other, um, like say they're in Kansas or they're in um, New York or, or wherever, they'll see that and they know they can reach out to me to, to help them. Um, so just to get a little more publicity, I guess, is as far as being able to publicize the helping side. So that's what I want to do next. And, but as far as the CBD stuff, man, I mean, I've said this since the beginning, dude. I, I, I want this market to collapse. I want, I want to sell my shit for $5. Um, I think it's ridiculous out here and all this fucking greed I see everywhere. Yeah, I'm not running competitions where I'm paying fucking somebody $50,000 to win it or whatever. Where do you think that fucking money comes from? It comes from the people, either an investment group or it comes from people paying more for your products. I'm not putting any certain brands on blast. It's just things that I've seen, you know, that, that, um, things that are out there. Um, I, I want the prices to drop and I think they will. And I think they're starting to. Um, I, I, like I said, I want it to get down to where anyone who wants it can afford it, and it's no different than saying, "Oh, I, I, you know, this was my coffee budget or whatever." You know, where it's along that line level, because it's it's um, it's it's really hard, man. I, it's really hard out there. I'm a, I'm I'm um, I guess privileged or or, or fortunate. I mean, I can't. I, Dude, I've been homeless, man. I've been out there. I've been fucking strung out on drugs, uh, heroin, uh, fucking alcoholic. I've been all that shit. I've had nothing. And now I have things, you know, and it didn't come easy. And it wasn't, I got lucky in a lot of ways. Not everyone gets that luck. And some people are out there doing the fucking best they can, man. And and, and, and it's hard for people to budget out here, dude. Uh, so that's, that's where I hope the CBD stuff goes because I think it can be, beneficial to a lot of people and i think when you look around at people out here man that so many so many people are just not even even able to consider it because it's just not affordable yeah they're barely they're barely making it yeah yeah i i really hope it does drop down and 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 i'm cool with that you know it's not gonna hurt me i mean i'm just gonna keep doing my thing if i can double my if i could double my product um milligrams or, or cut the price in half or something I, I, I'd do that well we uh, mm-hmm. we appreciate you again we're going to be giving out some uh, some CBD uh, to some of the people yeah. that uh, that ask questions today you know um, we, you know, you've, you've helped us get to where we are, believe it or not. I mean we haven't talked a lot uh, by phone and uh, I appreciate you doing yeah. this with us here today but yeah, um, yeah. you know this definitely helped get us off the ground and you know we want we wanted to focus on the listeners and you know letting that white belt blue belt and even the purple belts kind of yeah. little peek behind the curtain yeah. what people talk about what other people are talking about uh, let them know that they're not the only ones asking those questions um, so right. so we appreciate you you know that that's been our audience and you know you've definitely helped yeah. us uh, get in front of a lot of people that probably wouldn't have otherwise listened to us so we appreciate yeah, that thank man. you Ain't no thing bro um I'm always down to, to, to help anyone who's who's on who's like on my level. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, 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 that they care about you know, like y'all, man. Y'all care about the people out here. You know, this is a, a passion for you to 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 be training and being able to get back and like kind of just build up this community for people. Yeah. And that's great, dude. That's what it's about, you know. And, and anything that comes from it, that's awesome too. But uh, people have to have the right motivations for the things they do. Mm-hmm. Hey Justin, I, I, Justin, I got one more for you. So I got a buddy that I met uh, just recently. His name is Pat Fox, and he asked a question. And here's a move question for you, right? So how do you pro- uh, provide or prevent, better yet, from getting choked when somebody has your back? What move do you use? What move do you use to when somebody has your back to prevent them from choking you? Well, me personally, man, um, well, first, don't get your back taken. Of course, one. of course, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told them, too. That's number one. Don't don't put you yourself that, in that spot. If, you, if you're already there, uh, you know, one thing I like to do is, you know, sometimes people, you got a hand fight, right? That's cool. But a lot of times, think, first thing I do is kind of like, I don't know how to even describe it. I kind of try to drop my hips lower below theirs and get my get myself where my head's lower. So kind of, I try to slide down. Because if you if you if they if they if they if they can put their chin on your shoulder, they can fucking choke you. If you're down below them a little bit, it's it's much harder to get choked. 
you got to start looking out for other stuff because you're opening yourself up to get triangle from the back or arm barred or something like that. But as far as like a rear naked choke, just scooting down. I'm not saying drop to where their legs are in their armpits or nothing, but if you don't know what to do, just shifting down a little bit can buy you some time because they gotta, they're going to have to adjust where they're sitting. Um, that's, that's one thing that I think is easy and doesn't really take any skills. Just change your, change your position. And then, you know, I'm not super great at escaping the back, uh, getting out of back, especially dude, once they get a, a body triangle on you, it's a whole different game. You got to start working on And once they, if you're wearing a gi and they got an arm around your neck and they're holding your collar, that's a whole different game. If they're holding your collar, don't drop down because you're just like feeding them a bow and arrow. I was talking about a, a rear naked. Okay. But, um, uh, yeah, just start working. Move, 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 move. Don't sit there. Don't let them get them hooks in, dude. Like if they, if you know, you can, you should be able to tell your back is about to get taken. Uh, don't let them get those hooks in. Whatever you can do. Turtle. I mean, shit, I turtle all the fucking time because a lot of people aren't good from attacking from um, someone in a turtle, and it'll buy, it'll buy you some time. And to me, it's definitely better to turtle and make them try to take your back, um, you know, from 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 that angle, uh, give you a little bit chance to to scramble, stand up. I tell people that shit all the time too. I mean, I'm no coach, so don't listen to me. But I'm like, guess what? Stand up. <laughs> you know. How do you get out of their guard? Stand up. Oh, how do you get out of their guard? Stand up. Like, people just lay there a lot of times. It's like, if you're free to move, fucking try to stand up, you know, if you if you can. It's hard to do that when they're on your back. But, uh, but like I said, if you're turtled or something and you, can, and you can start to lift yourself a little bit, it's harder for it's going to be hard them, for them to take your back. You see it a lot in MMA because people in MMA are good at that. They'll go from a turtle and they'll stand and they'll dip, and they'll dip their head and try to get the person to slide off, off their back. That's you right. see it much That's more right. in MMA, and people are so used, I think, to in jujitsu in like um, working on points and things like that that they that they don't really think about that as much. So, yeah, definitely, that's a long answer, mm-hmm. but I'd say protect your neck. Don't let them get any. Um, uh, you know, if you can get a wrist control on them, that's cool. But don't get don't get. Um, don't get married to that idea because sometimes you'll grab someone's wrist and you, and you think you're doing good, but they're just fucking with you. And the next thing you know, they got their hand across and they got your collar. And so, you know, watch your collars, watch your hands. You know, if you can, if you can dip them to the side and it feels like it's a good side for you to go to. Sometimes people say, don't, don't, don't dive into the, into the choking side or whatever. To me, I feel like, uh, there's probably some rules you should you should follow, but also some people are more comfortable going different directions than others. So if it feels like th- this direction is you're going to fall, feels like good for you, that you can as you go, you know, push their knee and scoot your hips out and turn into their guard. Uh, whatever direction is stronger for you, I'd say go for that. Don't don't try to alter your advice. too much, especially if you're if you're a white belt. Yeah, good advice. Good advice. It's great advice. So, uh, Justin, I'm not going to kick you out, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna let you go. I won't keep you around for sure, just man. the uh, kind of the the exit thank yous that we do. But uh, again, we appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you, and I, I just want to say I appreciate everything and, and y'all having me on here. Um, and like I said earlier, if anyone out there sees this and and thinks that I can help them at all, feel free to. To send me a message on Instagram, Facebook, uh, email from the website, whatever. Okay. And, and I would, like I said, I'm no coach. It's not up to me to give people advice. Um, but I have been through a lot of shit in my life, and I've helped a lot of people get out of a lot of um, shitty spots in their life. And um, as a counselor, and so sometimes in jujitsu, like you said, y'all guys are focusing on mostly on white belts, blue belts, things like that. A lot of times, people. I think get um, get the the, the wrong um, idea in their head about why it is they're going to jujitsu and what it is they're supposed to get out of this process. Mm-hmm. And I would just tell people if if you think that it's just so that you can get good at grappling, you know, get that shit out of your mind real real quick. Because if you if if being good is your measure of success you're probably going to feel like a failure for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got to find these small goals and you, you guys got to do it in there. Who's a black belt. He can tell you this way better than I can, yeah. but people who adjust their goals and meet and are able to meet their goals, 
they, they stick it out and they stick, stick it through and they keep going and they enjoy the process. And so that's all I would encourage people out there who are struggling with this process. No one asked me this question, mm-hmm. but you see it all the time. Like, man, I'm thinking about quitting. I suck. I'm a fucking failure. I'm a loser. Everyone, oh, I'm a purple belt. Why are the white belts tapping me out? And yeah. blah, blah, blah. You know, man, get that shit out of your mind. This shit's for fun, you know? For and, sure, man. Yeah. For sure. All right, man. Yeah, have fun. Awesome. Thank you, man. We appreciate Thanks, you. My computer's about to die anyway, so the, the connection's going to get lost. But we appreciate you. Thank you so much. And anything we could do, man, to, to help you, uh, you let us know. All right? Next time you want to come on, let's let us know. Hopefully, hopefully this was at least somewhat entertaining. You know, yeah, well. <laughs> hey, feel free to edit my shit I talk about. I'm not too much. <laughs> no worries, man. No. Thank you, Justin. You take care, brother. Thanks, Justin. Bye. Take care, Bye. man. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. He did that on purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's showing his garbage pail T-shirt on purpose. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, brother. Yeah. Take care, man. You want me to hang up? There you go. Oh, I did it on you, man. <laughs> All right, guys. That was hey, awesome. We're done. I, yeah, that was I was good. about to lose. I, I knew the battery was going to die next time I plug in. Uh, what'd you guys think? Good Some show, good man. info, good right? Show for yeah, sure. I like it. Yeah, good he's guy. a he's a really good dude, man. I mean, good guy. Uh, you understand why now? I said, you know, I thought I was going to have him on for ten minutes, and I, and as soon as I he started telling me about the stuff that he that he's doing, I mean, within the first two minutes of the phone call, I was like. Uh, maybe we should have you on for the whole show, and I'm glad we did. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. he seems that like a real awesome. good dude. Um, you know, and I'll throw this out to you guys. You know, I'm, obviously he's a great person to be involved with. Anything that we could do, any ideas that you want to maybe run past him, whether it's collecting geese, and I've got a whole bunch of old geese that I just put into storage. I'm like, should I send them to you? Should I? Maybe I can send them to the next guy that asks you for help across country. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I know that I've got this stuff. Obviously, go through jujitsu t-shirts like it's going out of style. Uh, but um, you know, what else? What else could we be doing? What What could we do to help him? And you know, what else could we be doing to help people out there that that might hear this and say, you know, yeah, I might take that first step. So, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. Toss it out to you guys if you think of anything. Let's talk to Justin about it. Yeah, for sure, man. I think he's, he's got a great product. You know, yeah. good price point where you compare it to other things. Yeah, it's proven to help. Yeah, you know, yeah. when you think about what it came out when people started using it for seizures, right? So some yeah. type of neurological problem, yeah. but then also muscular, right? So it yeah. works in that way as well. So it, yeah. You know what it helped me with the first time I ever took the, the fight back? Acid reflux. Hmm. I take pills every day, morning and night, and I, I was able to stop taking them when I when I took fight back, yeah. when, I, when I started taking the CBD. So, I mean, it's an unexpected consequence of, of taking it. Um, I have talked to my doctor, and I have to lay off of it for a little bit because of my my heart issues. Hmm. I do. There's some crossover with some things that it doesn't let my medications do. Hmm. My medications are opening up my arteries, and the CBD is actually kind it's of constricting, uh, it's them. constricting them from what I understand. So I did have to stop taking it for now. Okay. That's from my doctor. I'm going to talk to my cardiologist next month about it. So I've actually stopped. I didn't realize. I probably, with the hmm. heart condition and four stints, I probably should have talked to my doctor before i took right. anything else that's true but uh but uh but i'm a little sad to be off of it i got all these little aches and pains <laughs> that i that i know that it could help with but uh yeah i'm sure it yeah. helped with my nerve yeah issues in my arm so i'm definitely yeah. jumping on that well i don't know if uh bo's got these we got six new bottles from uh from justin awesome. when he sent the t-shirts nice. so you know, again, so we're, we're repping over here. Yeah, we're, we're repping big time. We've got uh, the CBD. We got the stickers on the uh, on the backdrop. Oh, so, and, what's the uh, deal with the stickers? What are we doing here? Um, well, we've got Fightback sent us some stuff, so he sent us the stickers. I definitely wanted to nice to you know promote Rep him. Uh, Ost Pop over here. Um, obviously, you know, I told him said the same thing. You know, I'd love to have uh, all of our sponsors, uh, anyone that we work with, send us stickers. You know, we're always looking for new sponsors, looking for people to, you know, not only to give away product, but listen. You know, um, as we get more popular, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do some cash sponsorships and, and things like that to help cover expenses and keep us on the air. Yeah. You know, uh, I think we've had a, a real good uh, response to what we're doing and. You know, what do you think about jujitsu club sending in a, a patch or something? Maybe we just throw it on the table there and, you know, yeah, patches. I think the decals would be better. Decals? <laughs> decal okay. stickers yeah. would be better because I could just stick them on back there. But okay, yeah, if sure. you want to whip out your sewing kit and sew it on there, bro, you can yeah, have that. They have this brother. thing called uh, a yeah. two way tape. Well, there you go, my man. Uh, actually, Sticky Velcro. when this video, Gorilla Glue, 
<laughs> what's that little guy that 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 does the what's that uh, glue flex tape flex glue all that stuff right we'll do that double, we'll have you here with the little yeah. double side that um we're going to have we'll have a post office box um on the website because i do get a lot of people hey where can i send you something i want to send you this it does yeah. happen uh there'll be a new p.o box on the contact page of jujitsu dummies.com uh and people you know they you know, have wanted to send products for review when they saw us do the uh, the review for the massage gun on the on the second episode, uh, and people have also asked for sizes. Uh, so we're going to have a bios page up with all of our sizes. Awesome. If anybody wants to send us anything, there will be a PO box for them uh, to send it to. Um, obviously, again, you know, if they want to have a conversation about actually sponsoring the show, just reach out uh, at you, you Dummies on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And, um, you know, they can always send us an email at uh, info. At, tag us. Tag at, us uh, and we'll repost them on the stories. Uh, yeah. You know, if anybody sends us anything, I start reposting on social media. Yeah. You definitely get some love there. We're doing, uh, you know, we've got quite a following uh over uh, such a short amount of time. I mean, we've been doing this six months, so it's been, uh, you know, right? May, right? May, May, June, July, wow, August, really? September, flies, time flies. Time October. Flies, huh? You know, I would definitely love to be doing more episodes. Uh, we're going to be doing some mini episodes. Uh, I think we've I've talked a bit about, that. I've talked about it with you guys a little bit, you know, maybe just one or two of us doing like a 10, 15 minute episode. Uh, it'll be shot just a little differently, but uh, we'll do it here in the studio and, uh, and also, you know, do like a product giveaway, but answer some of the questions that we, we get so many questions that I feel bad. It's like, there's some really serious questions out there that people have asked and are looking for advice and I wait to answer them for the show, but we can't get every single question mm -hmm. on the show. So, uh, we're going to do some stuff where we can answer some of the questions here and there and, uh, and put out some small, uh, just kind of mini episodes, uh, again, maybe between 10 and 20 minutes, maybe. Uh, so, uh, again, you know, uh, does anybody have anything else that they want to talk about? Takeaways. Before I do the, uh, you got a takeaway from this episode? What do you think? I mean, wash your fucking belt. About, I mean, yeah, Jesus. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, I was going to say, but the opposite, right? Wash your gee, not so much about. Right, I was almost embarrassed away. that I, that I mean, did you see Justin's face when I said that I wash it like every other time? He thought that was a lot. You guys don't ever wash your belts. No, I, I mean, think I've washed I, my belt. I'm, I'm just blown they, away. Yeah, they, even a, a conversation. I'm blown away only because yeah. when I first got into jujitsu, I was uh, I knew three people who were in it, you know, and they said specifically never wash your belt. Yeah. And I was like, oh, really? Is it's that a you know why they say that? Because you know the is. Brazilians say that the old school guys say that that you know like. It's but you know what it becomes to power that's it's like uh who's the guy with the hair? What's the fable the about or the hair? Samson, it's not Samson. a fable, is it's it, a Bible story. Is it a Bible? I'm sorry. Uh oh. Did <laughs> yeah, you see his face when I said it? <laughs> Watch out. Wow. Watch that, out. What's what's the hair? The, Samson. Samson. Samson, Samson, yeah. With the hair. Um it's not like that where all the powers are <laughs> belt, but that's that's where that came from. The yeah. washing belt came from that. Yeah. I mean, again, I wash it every couple of times because I'm the like, Easter bunny. It, it fades so much and gets too, right? and starts to rip apart. What's Easter that? bunny's fake too. What's so that? So it's Santa. <laughs> I'm here, man. It's an Put indoctrination thing. What's that? It's an it. indoctrination thing. I suppose you know, it's it. what you Easter get told, bunny right? Is fake. You get what you get told when you first start. Probably lives with you, right? So maybe I was told the same thing as Raúl. Don't wash your belt. Guess what? I'm not washing my belt. So, you know, coach, coach doesn't wash his belt. I think hey. Sophia said the other day she had to, she like grabbed it. She's like, <laughs> she said she threw it in the wash. Don't smell it. <laughs> don't I don't smell it. No, Just don't smell it. it. Yeah. That's the way around yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. I I I, I got to reevaluate my relationship with you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I'm disappointed. Oh, I thought yeah. I, I thought Do you want to go out to dinner with me? <laughs> exactly right. The non the non belt wash. I actually right? thought that Janet washers. was going to be the one that was like, you guys are disgusting. You don't wash your belt, and yeah. she's oh. sorry to let you down. Good Lord. All right, listen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, don't forget, we're going to do that little contest. $50 uh, coupon code from Choke Responsibly to the podcast store, to Moving the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast store. If you like the YouTube video, we want you to comment. Give us a comment, a positive comment. Don't call me fat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And <laughs> Tell him to stop watching his belt. Tell him that. <laughs> like comment i'll and send you a shirt the channel i'll send you a shirt i'll send you a shirt <laughs> you tell milton don't wash your belt that come on now. you know what you give come it on this come on now you know what we don't wash our belts. junior what's your instagram j vega junior at and, the other way at, at, at j vega junior yeah Okay, if anybody wants to have a discussion about washing your belt or not let's washing your belt, hit this let's man up on that. Instagram right yeah, there, okay? 
Um, uh, so the contest for, for YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe Good. to the channel. All right? Uh, and we'll, uh, you'll basically be thrown into a hat. We'll pick a name, and somebody's going to get a $50 uh, coupon code for uh, anything from the podcast store for, on chokeresponsibly.com. Uh, on top of that, again, we're going to give away two bottles. That, that These bottles are ours here, but... When we have some when a winner, yep. yeah, when, when a winner, when somebody wins or somebody submits a question and we pick who it's going to go to, um, I hook you up with Justin. I'll message you. I'll put you together with Justin. We do a little group chat on Instagram and you'll provide him with your address. And that's how that goes down. He doesn't awesome. send it to us. As a matter of fact, none. we don't get any of the products here. We ask the sponsors to send it out. Better for the sponsor sure. too. You know, yeah, like, it's more connection like with hey, them you're not like, sending everything to us. Yeah, yeah. Here's the, the listener. You send it. Uh, plus, you know, they can develop a relationship. Again, some people have uh, um, actually uh, this <laughs> Justin uh, hitting us up here. Let me put <laughs> Justin. Justin, what are you doing um, right now? <laughs> I, <laughs> You're digging us. He's Watch your belt. <laughs> Justin, just so you know, Justin's messaging me, but he's supposed, I think he's trying to talk to, he text the wife, meant to text the wife. <laughs> he's like, what are you eating for dinner? What are we doing? <laughs> You should, you should, Jimmy and I are going out. I'm nothing. So, I'm good for tonight. Uh, where were we? What was you, you started to ask a question. Did you ask a question? His question? No. No, no, no. I, I forget where I, I I lost it when I started reading Justin's text. No. So, okay. So, that's the contest for YouTube. Uh, special thank you to Ospop, right? Uh, Ospop.com, um, at Ospop on Instagram. Uh, check them out. Let them know we sent you. Uh, if you've got shirts or if you win a shirt, please uh, post. Tag us, tag the show, uh, tag Ospop. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's it goes a lot further when uh, you we know share we get a little community. love on the yeah. community. You know, sure. so let them know that we're out here. Uh, I always say, you know, support your jujitsu companies. You know, there's a you know we're so niche that it's uh, you know we have a very small, much smaller audience than a guy selling funny T-shirts, right? Um, again, special thank you to our podcast patrons. Uh, we've got uh, CJ Carroll. Uh, we've got, I'm sorry, let me get to all my names. Um, so James Fisher, can't forget about James. He's obviously the guy that hooked us up with, uh, with fight back, uh, Chuck Reddor. Uh, he's out in uh, Gracie Kona Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. He's right Academy, about not right? having he's a neck. He's out in man. Hawaii. That What's guy's that? right about not having a neck. I seen his <laughs> You saw the pictures? Kiddos. Uh, CJ Carroll. He's my man on Insta, uh, on Twitter. Excuse me. He's always on Twitter. He's always reposting and liking. Thank you. And uh, as, as always, CJ likes us to shout out Mission 22. They help veterans. Uh, Thank you, Mission 22. You know, yeah, Mission 22. Uh, they're helping uh, you know battle uh, uh, you know veteran suicide. Um, I think that's it. Did I cover everyone? Did I miss anything? Also, if you do buy, you know, listen. Uh, you know, Justin talked about. Um, you know, giving away CBD. I wanted to. I wanted to mute it right there. No, no, yeah, we wanted to yeah. buy. It's, it's great flood. that he gives yeah. it away. I agree. I love that he gives it away. If you need it, if you're looking to get sponsored, if you're a fighter, you know, reach out to him. That's great. But for the rest of us out there, for the rest of the people, you know, go on fightback uh, mm -hmm. fightbackcbd.com, make a purchase. He's doing really great things. If you don't need it for yourself, send it to somebody that you know. Your you, who is it again? Father-in-law. Your father-in-law. Um, you know, friends, family, somebody, you know, that can, that could use it, order it, send it out. You're, you're really, you know, helping a, a really great cause. He's getting people. Yeah. It definitely goes gyms, way beyond just helping with, with subdue some pain, right? It goes way beyond yeah. that. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's doing something really great. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I not only that, I, if I could say, uh, one, one, one of the principles or one of the, the, the spirit of jujitsu, one of the, the, the things about jiu-jitsu is helping to grow jiu-jitsu, right? Always adding in. I mean, I, the, the, the mountaintop would be actually uh, creating a move that spreads worldwide. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. But any small contribution could, could help, even if it means getting a rash guard for, you know, a, a kid who's into it. You know, you know, those things are expensive, you know, helping their parents out, get him a gi, get him a rash guard, whatever it is. Um, but especially helping someone out like Justin, who... Um, I mean, he wants to create that free place for people to, to roll. And that's almost impossible to find unless you know somebody. But, you know, just supporting Justin, I think, is contributing to jiu-jitsu sure. because yeah. Yeah. he is making such an impact in the world of jiu-jitsu and bringing it into people's lives where it could help. I mean, just buying one bottle helps him continue that mission. And, uh, you know, I think that would be a huge thing and keeps yeah. in the spirit of jiu-jitsu. When I was talking to him, when I, when I approached him to do this, I mean, it was... I mean, he's just involved with so much and mm -hmm. 
can just t- he, he, we could have done another two hours of him telling us the things that he's involved with, the things that he's done, his life, what he does now. But uh, I mean, he's doing a really great thing. Let's support him. Uh, let's. Uh, he, we've got some stickers here. Uh, I know that he does patches once in a while, so I'll get patches if you guys, you know, throw them on your geese. Uh, that would be great. Uh, but, uh, yeah, again, big shout out to, to him. Uh, big shout out to James, Chuck, uh, CJ, Mission 22, everyone out there who's supporting us. We appreciate it. If you want to get your own shout out on the show, you want us to shout you out, um, your, your gym, your academy, uh, you're doing an event. Uh, just go to our website for five dollars a month. It's it's like a it's a subscription. Five dollars a month will shout you out on every single episode. Um, there are some other sponsor like larger sponsorships there. If you're a business, uh, you want to have your products featured. Uh, there's a package there for fifty dollars a month, uh, and you get a free T-shirt every single month along with the shout out academy. Yep, yep. You get a free t- a free uh, no. uh, choke responsibly T-shirt. So That's what those packages about. are on Jujitsu Dummies. Dot com. They're on the patrons slash podcast page. You can go there. You can just buy them yourself. Uh, so, uh, so again, uh, help support us. We're supporting them. Supports the jujitsu jiu- jiu- community and uh, and the show as well. It helps keep us on air. You know, Bo eats a lot of hamburgers, so I got to keep him more in, fed. In food. Man, does good. <laughs> got to keep the guy behind the camera fed. Uh, so, uh, again, thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to us. Peace out. Oh, Peace s- out. Wash your gear. Don't worry about your Wash your belt. Wash your belt. Wash your belt. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. That was, that was awesome. awesome. What Great do you think? show, man. Yeah. Hey, you know, yeah.